Now we've all heard the story of Daniel and how God rescued Daniel from the lion's den without being harmed. But what was it about Daniel's life that put him in the lion's den? What was his crime that resulted in such a punishment? Now Daniel was guilty, all right, but he was guilty for his relentless obedience to God. Daniel was just a teenager. He was taken into captivity during the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Now Babylon was a city devoted to materialism and sensual pleasure. And Daniel was from the royal family of Israel. He was educated, handsome, and was well qualified to hold a position in government. Now the king recognized the value of Daniel to serve in the kingdom in order for him to be educated and trained in the Babylonian system. Daniel was taught all things Babylon. Now, Daniel's life, in some ways, is not too different from my life. He was a teenager, raised in the church, educated, healthy, and lived in a stable home. But he was now in captivity and was faced with a great challenge. Would he be faithful to the one true God or serve the false Babylonian gods? Now, he was no longer under his parents' supervision, and he didn't have to answer to them, and he was faced with a decision. Would he could be, continue to be obedient to God? So, let me ask you, what do you do when no one's watching? Do you say no to cheating at school? At your job, do you give things away to your friends for free? And do you say no to your boyfriend or girlfriend when they want to go too far? And when you're alone on the computer, what are you looking at? Daniel 1.8 says, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine that was offered to him. Daniel was basically offered the Chick-fil-A of Babylon. Okay, but because the food was offered to the idol, Daniel would not eat it. Now, can you imagine turning down free Chick-fil-A? <laughs> now, he was determined not to fall into sin, and he didn't allow his friendly captivity to trick him into failing God. Now, sin can be very friendly. It can seem like it's not that bad, or I'm just having fun, and it won't hurt anyone but me. But sin is rebellion and disobedience against God. And if you're not careful, sin will take you out. And you will lose your identity in Christ and your determination to be obedient to God. Now, we will be tempted, but God will always make a way of escape. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond what others have had to face. God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you through it. Now, God rewarded Daniel for his obedience. Daniel 1.18 through 20 said, God gave him knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand dreams and visions of all kinds and he was placed as second in command of the kingdom. Now like Daniel, I myself have been in a place of friendly captivity. Last year, I was involved in friendships that challenged my resolve to relentlessly pursue God. I started lying to my parents, sneaking around late at night, and all I cared about was myself. I had allowed a Babylonian mindset to creep into my life and I ultimately ate the Chick-fil-A. Now when God showed me where I was spiritually last year, I had to make a decision, and I chose to pursue God relentlessly. I repented to God and asked my parents for forgiveness, and I had to change my friends. Now in this, I found freedom, and though it was hard coming to the realization of where I was spiritually, God brought healing and contentment for my obedience. Now Daniel was taken from his home, held captive in a foreign land, and 
indoctrinated by a godless culture, yet he relentlessly sought after God. So what's your excuse? Now when materialism and sensual pleasure are taking you captive, pulling you away from your relentless pursuit of God, I challenge you, will you dare to be a Daniel?